We're going to turn this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10. It's a little bit different topic this morning, but one that I find is quite central to uh, much of our lives. Really, we're talking about faith, but the problem many times is instead of living by faith, we live by imagination. I was, in thinking about it this week, you know, it, it's, it's polluted a lot of things. Uh, instead of living by God's Word, many times we go by what we think and, and what we like. Uh, even worship in many churches, many times people don't stop and think, well, what does God want? They think, what do I like? What do I want to do? And it, that's not always wrong. I'm not saying that. But as we look in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we're gonna, I'm going to read verses 3 through 5. And he makes a very definite and bold statement here, and I, I hope that we can understand it and apply it to our lives today. 2 Corinthians 10, starting in verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I'm just going to stop reading there. You know, one of the things he's saying here is what we've looked at as well in Ephesians chapter 6, that our main conflict in life is not physical. The main battle we fight is spiritual. The way he puts it in, in Ephesians is we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers. And he talks about the, uh, the spiritual battle that we face. And he's saying here in verse 4 that God's weapons are mighty and they're available for our use. But the problem is many times we substitute the earth's physical weapons that are not mighty. <laughs> and we try to solve our problems with earthly solutions instead of living by faith. God intends good. God's intention with all that we enjoy is, is good. But we often take what God intends for good and we use it for evil. I mean, take your body, take your mind. God intends us to use it for good. But how often do people take their mind and they use it for things that are, are not good? The Bible tells us in Genesis 1 that when God looked at his creation, the whole, everything was good. It was very good. But then came sin. And uh, we live in a, a corrupted world. Today we want to concentrate on this, this subject of our imagination. You know, creativity is a wonderful thing. And it comes from God. I, I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but God could have made our world very bland if he wanted to. I, I had a terrible thought this week. I thought, God could have made everybody look like me. <laughs> wouldn't that be awful <laughs> and you're thinking no it could have looked like you that would have been good no. <laughs> God has imagination God is very creative I, I, I love you know, I, maybe you're the same I don't know I, I love just looking around looking at people looking at things because there's just such creativity there you know God has made things that we'll never see and yet he made them good he made them beautiful microscopic things. You know, you get those microscopes and you look at things and they're perfect. Tiny. And if I'd have made it, it'd be a blob. You know? <laughs> he made things at the bottom of the ocean that we'll, we'll never see, but they're beautiful. He made things in outer space that we'll never see, but they're beautiful. He made little things. He made huge things. Yeah, our, our world looks tiny compared to some of the things God made. And all fit into the expanse. You could, you could go on and on, couldn't you? Uh, we have a very creative God, and occasionally you see it in us. I see things in, in the world, and I think, who would have thought of that? The, the classic one for me is Mount Rushmore. You know, you know where they carve those presidents' heads on a mountain? Who would think, I think I'll carve four presidents' heads on that mountain? <laughs> Why would you even think that? But somebody did, and then they not only thought it, they did it. <coughs> Creativity, it can be a wonderful thing. You see it in Adam in uh, Genesis chapter 2. God brought all the animals before him, and he named them. 
Here's a man with absolutely no experience of anything, but he's able to be so creative, hmm, rabbit, giraffe, <laughs> you know, gorilla, <laughs> I don't know uh, what it was like, and I guess it, well, it probably wasn't in English, but uh, uh, he named them all. Very creative, and that just shows us what our God is like. You know, when the world talks about evolution, I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but, uh, you know, when, when the world talks about evolution, uh, there's no creativity in, in, in that. Our world wouldn't be like, like this if it was all by chance. Uh, we see the person of God in, the, you know, the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. What a blessing to know that God intended things for good. And uh, that, that word imaginations there in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, it, it means conclusions or solutions. God wants us to use our brain to solve problems. The devil wants you to use your brain to cause problems. <laughs> and selfishness will do that. God wants us to use it for, for good things. There's a couple of verses that use the same word. For instance, Romans 3.28, he says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith. We can conclude things. We can, we can make decisions. We can understand. Uh, Romans 2.15, uh, he says, the whole verse, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another, their thoughts. We have thoughts. God is able to use our mind. God give us, gives us the ability to come to, to solutions based on truth. The ability to think. You'll, you'll hear people say things like, that was a creative solution. Or, that's thinking outside the box. It's true, isn't it? Sometimes you think, boy, that was boy, they were really clever to think of that. And I'm constantly amazed at how clever people can be inventing things and so on. That's a, a picture of God. But the problem is that that imagination and creativity we saw in Adam and that we sometimes see in our world is often distorted. And that started right, right in Genesis chapter 6. This is a really sad verse. It's right before the flood. The Bible says, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This same creativity that we can use for good, we can also use for evil. We can use it for very, very selfish things. And, and it became distorted. And in Genesis 11, you see that God, God brought the flood. He brought judgment. I want to give you three points this morning. It's very simple. Uh, the fight, uh, the problem here, the, the battle. And then secondly, the faith. And then thirdly, the filter. In uh, 2 Corinthians 10 there and, and verse 5, uh, you see the battle in verse 5, the fight. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There's some battle words in there. Uh, casting down, captivity. Uh, there's a battle. And the battle is, who will be exalted? Your thoughts or God's thoughts? You or God? You know, we'll, we'll all have lots of thoughts. And uh, sometimes we'll have good thoughts. Sometimes we'll have really dumb thoughts. <laughs> I remember telling my pastor one time an idea. He said, that's a dumb idea. <laughs> and he was right. You know, not everything we think is going to be smart or, or right. Only imagination based on truth is worthwhile. Only imagination obeying Christ is worthwhile. And he talks here about casting down the unworking solutions that we're stuck with now. You know, our world gets into gear and certain ideas. And man, whole societies can be ruined by following wrong imaginations. Right. You, you know, you see pictures of people, uh, one that comes to my mind was people that they would put rings on the women's necks until their necks were stretched. And if they would take those off, they, they would die. Why would you do that? Why, why would you use your imagination to do something so harmful? Uh, nowadays, you're seeing people with tattoos all over. I'm sorry if, if that's your case today, but you, that's just like the devil's graffiti. There's nothing going to be prettier than the skin that God gave you. 
If you have a tattoo, that's all right. Use it for the glory of God, you know. God can use it to give you ins, input with, with other people. But uh, we know a pastor who's got all kinds of tattoos, and, uh, you know, God's used it as, as a blessing to him. But, uh, you know, our imagination. Uh, Satan abuses our imagination, and one of the things he does is he, he turns it to fantasy. Uh, sin attacks us. And we need creative solutions, and yet... Sometimes we can't come up with a creative solution because we're lost in a fantasy world. Uh, there's people who come to church. They hear sermons that should help them, but they can't apply it because they can't think. Their mind is somewhere else. They don't, you know, they hear a sermon about David killing Goliath, but they don't know how to apply it to kill the giants in their own life, to live by faith. Fantasy. Fantasy is imagination based on untruth. And we, we've all done that as children. That's, that's a pretty normal thing as, as a child. In fact, the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 13, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's no longer acceptable to think and act uh, like children when, when we're adults. And that's what adults are supposed to help children to do, is to learn how to, how to grow up. Uh, as adults, now I don't know you, your thoughts personally, but uh, there are adults who are living in a fantasy world based on untruth. Only God's truth can get your imagination back to where it ought to be. God gave you a, a mind. He's given you creativity. Uh, let me mention some areas of fantasy. One is worry. Some people love to worry. And, you know, most of the things you worry about will never happen. But then you think, oh, well, one of them did. And so there's a good excuse to, to worry. There's a difference between concern and worry. Concern is when you can do something about it. Worry is when it, probably, it may not happen and you couldn't do anything about it if it did. I mean, you could worry about a meteorite hitting Stafford Road at 610. Oh, that could happen. <laughs> but there's nothing you could do about it other than quit coming to church, I guess. I don't know. You know, that's, that's imagination out of control. In uh, Philippians 4, 6, I, I love how God puts things. He says, be careful for nothing. He didn't just say, don't worry. He put it, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And in Peter, you know, if you're talking about prayer, he said, casting all your care upon him. If it's a concern, give it to the Lord. If there's something you can do, do it. But don't live in a fantasy world of, uh, of worry. Some people live in the fantasy world of denial. They look at things and they, they see what probably will be, but they think, oh, maybe that won't happen. He, he'll probably make a good husband. <laughs> uh, you know, it'll be all right. You ever heard somebody say that when, when everything's not all right? It'll be all right. It's just denial. Uh, that's fantasy. Self-condemnation. Fantasizing failure and condemnation when God says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which in Christ Jesus. Yeah, you can get in the habit in your mind of just being negative and, and condemning of yourself and of, of what God is doing in your life. Uh, relationships. Oh, if only I could marry this person or only if I could get this job or if only I could have this health blessing. Or uh, Sometimes it's negative. If that just hadn't happened... Everything would be all right. Uh, all my problems uh, would go away. Uh, relationships can, can be a fantasy world. A specific one, and I, I, I want to mention this this morning, is pornography. We're living in a world where it's, it's just so common now. Thing, they're showing things actually on television that would have been considered pornography when I was a child. Um, fantasizing about things that should never happen. Uh, and by the way, anything good that God gives, Satan will distort. Anything. Satan is not creative. He takes what God does and he distorts it. And you'll see that in art now, where instead of being creative, they distort things. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a sign of turning away from the, from the things of God. You know, there's people who, who can't solve problems. There's, there's men who in their homes can't solve the problems 
that God has given them the, the mind to work with because they're involved with pornography. And their, their mind is given to, to fantasy instead of to proper thinking. Imagination is godlike unless it's based on a lie. And fantasy can't become reality because it's, it's based on an untruth. And, and there's, in the news sometimes you'll hear of terrible crimes that people commit. And they've been fantasizing, fantasizing, fantasizing. And then they do some, some terrible thing. Uh, with with uh, pornography, it leads to frustration and anger and depression. No, there's no satisfaction in, in pornography. But they think that that's the solution for their problem when it's actually the cause. The cause of their frustration and anger and depression is what they then turn to to, to try and solve it. L let me give you another example. It's gotten pretty quiet in here. <laughs> you can, a person can fantasize about pastoring. I'm a pastor. Uh, you can think, our church would never have any problems. Our people would just be perfect. We're just going to, this is, you know, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And, uh, you know, as a, as a pastor, you can fantasize about having the perfect church instead of using your mind to solve the problems. You know, a pastor is basically a problem solver and a preacher. And if you live in a fantasy world, it leads to frustration and anger and, and depression and so on. God gives us imagination to solve problems. Satan doesn't want us to do that. He wants to, uh, to use our imagination to cause problems. Uh, there's a couple of verses in uh, James chapter 1, verse 13 and following, when he talks about the progression. James 1, 13 says, Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. You know, people hear sermon after sermon and, and leave with nothing. Why? Because they're living in a fantasy world. They're, they're not able to apply it by faith. They're, they're trying to apply it to an unreal situation that doesn't exist. Uh, many people don't come to church to get uh, equipped by the Word of God and solve their problems. Uh, they come to have their feelings massaged. Uh, living in a fantasy of denial or worry or pornography, uh, you'll get nothing. Now, that's the fight. All right? That's the first point. There's the fight. Our imagination can be used for good or for evil. It can be used for God or against God. Uh, like he says there in, in 2 Corinthians 10, uh, verse 5, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. There's the fight. Here's the faith, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. See, there, there's where, where we need to be. Rather than uh, letting our minds just think anything, we need to let our minds be guided by the Word of God. In, in Romans chapter 6, for instance, and uh, verse 6, God says this, Knowing this, there's things that we can know. We don't just have to imagine. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. In verse 11, he says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves. There's things that we can know. We can have faith. The problem is that we think imagination is equal to faith. You'll hear churches even saying, Oh, you need to visualize this. You know, whatever you think and, and so on. Listen, it's not... It's not our thoughts that matter. It's God's thoughts. And imagination is good when it's controlled by the Lord, uh, when, it, when it's done in faith. Uh, we think imagination is, is equal to faith. Uh, because I think it, well, it, it must be worthwhile. I, I've had people express things to me, and uh, you know, they, they think it's so important and so true, and, and, and it's just nothing. Especially people who... Are, we had a friend who, <laughs> he had a, had a record of him and some of his friends talking when they'd been doing marijuana. He said, boy, you think you have these great thoughts. <laughs> or, 
or the equivalent might be being drunk or something. You know, you'll, you'll hear a, a drunk, well, they'll come up and they'll just talk and talk and talk and they're full of themselves. And he said he heard a recording of himself. He said, what rubbish. <laughs> it seemed real important and real true while he was saying it, but when he heard it back when he was saying, he thought, man, uh, that's no good. Uh, we, we think that imagination is equal to faith because we think it, it must be true. Imagination, really, if you get right down to the basics of it, it's like it talks about in Hebrews how that the Word of God can divide the, the soul and the spirit. There's a difference between your soul and your spirit. Your imagination is a function of your soul, your mind. Faith is a function of your spirit. You know, you might say, well, I can't imagine I'm saved because of, of, I've done this thing. Well, you're not supposed to imagine you're saved. You're supposed to believe you're saved. See, it's a function of your soul, not of, just of your mind. Imagination is powerful, but faith is more powerful and more important. You can believe what you can't imagine. That's kind of hard to wrap your mind around, but uh, for me, one example is heaven. I can't imagine heaven. Yeah, you know, I've heard people describe heaven in some of the dumbest descriptions. You know, one guy, he said that in heaven, there'd be a certain soft drink. Uh, yeah, that, that's not my idea of heaven. Uh, it's like not exactly the same stuff. You can remember seeing a, a bumper sticker, love is a German shepherd. Uh, man, that's not my description of love. <laughs> uh, heaven, you know, I can't imagine heaven. But tell you what, I can believe it. And when I get there... I'll be glad. Uh, salvation of a loved one. You know, sometimes there's someone you just can't imagine them getting saved. And I've heard people share testimonies. You have too, where they said, you know, I'm a Christian now, but people who knew me before couldn't imagine that this would ever happen. <laughs> Listen, we may not imagine it, but we can believe it. You know, there's people, I just can't see them, you know, being saved and living for the Lord, but I can believe it. God can change it. I've heard people say this about their marriage. Oh, you know, I'll, I'll tell people, oh, you need to pray that your marriage will be restored. Oh, that'll never happen. Listen, you may not be able to imagine it, but you can believe it. You can trust the Lord for it. Uh, you know, there's situations and you'll think it'll never work out, but you can believe. You can believe. Uh, one of my favorite verses is Jeremiah 33, 3. How does it go? Call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. We need to realize there's a few things God knows we don't know. <laughs> and we may not be able to imagine it, but we can believe that God has a good purpose and God can do something. There's another verse, Ephesians 3, verse 20. You need to know where these are. If you, if you don't have them memorized, at least know where they are. Ephesians 3, 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory. I want you to notice a word there. Think. Above, above all that we ask or think. <laughs> There's things you may not be able to imagine. You may not be able to think them. But you can trust the Lord. You can believe. A faith is so important. Faith is a function of our spirit. The problem is that sometimes we try to match faith and imagination, but they're not the same. I read Romans 6.11 earlier. Let's see. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Can you imagine yourself dead to sin? I can't. But I can believe it. Faith is the, is the, faith is the thing that overcomes the solutions we've come up with. You know, we look at our lives and, and our imagination runs wild sometimes. And we need to get back to faith. We need to get back to, to believing God. Uh, I heard of a physical illustration of this. Uh, you know, baseball is not that popular of a sport here, but uh, in the United States they play a lot of baseball. And there was a, a man named Dave Dravecki. He was a pitcher, pitcher for the San Francisco Giants, the top league in, in the world probably, a very good player. Pitcher's the guy that throws the ball to the batter. One day when he threw the ball, his arm broke. And in uh, exploring it medically, they found he had cancer in the bone of his arm. And they ended up cutting off not only his arm, but part of his shoulder. 
his career was obviously over. He was a Christian man. Had a tremendous testimony. It was a blessing to hear how he responded. But somebody asked him the worst part of it physically. He said, well, the worst part is having pain in my arm that's not there. That's so common they have a name for it. It's called phantom limb. They said, well, what do you do? He said, well, I've just got to keep believing that it's not there. See, he couldn't imagine it, but he could believe it. Now, faith overcomes imagination. Now, there's things in your life where you've, you've persuaded yourself this is the way it's going to be. And God says it doesn't have to be that way. You can believe Him. Faith overcomes sin. Jesus says in 1 John 5, This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Well, where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. We need to be people of faith. We may not imagine, but we can believe. You know, that, that verse, Romans 6, 11, Do you feel dead to sin? Can you imagine yourself dead to sin? No, you believe it. I don't feel dead. <laughs> I don't imagine I'm dead. I believe it. Faith comes before sight. Someday we'll, we'll see these things, I, I, I think. We may not be able to visualize victory over sin, or we may not be able to visualize forgiving that person that's wronged us, or whatever the situation is, but we can believe it. Believe it first. Uh, there's a verse we learned that, that we're learning it with Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs 16, 3, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. You know, put, put faith first. Put it into action. And let God change, change your mind. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. We see the fight. It's a battle. Who's, who's going to be exalted? We see the faith. God has given us his word. We can know the truth. And the truth can make us free. I want to give you one more, one more thing. The third thing. Uh, the filter. For your imagination, God has given you a filter. It's in Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Take a look there if you have, have your Bible. Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. You know, God gave you an Im imagination. God, he gave you the ability to think. He wants you to think. <laughs> but there's a filter for it. Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you've both learned and received and heard and seen and we do. And the God of peace shall be with you. This is the filter for our imagination. Uh, the main one being the fir very first one. Is it true? Is it true? Is it honest? Is it just? And he goes right through there. That's the guard at the gate of our mind. Think on these. Your mind can go everywhere. And it's because it's so private, you think, oh, I'll just go there. Be careful what you do with your imagination. Don't get into the habit uh, of thinking wrong thoughts. Change it. You can change your thinking. Yeah, I hear people all the time, it's like the, they act like they're out of control. Somebody else is pushing the buttons. Listen, it's you. <laughs> we decide what we think. And if you don't want to think about something, let me tell you how to do it. Think about something else. I've told you this before. When I was a boy, I have two brothers. We used to all sleep in the same room. Had some interesting experiences. And I, me being the youngest, I was usually the butt of all the jokes and, and trouble. Well, I have one brother. He's cantankerous. I mean, he's, you, you've met him. Um, <laughs> and right as we were going to sleep, he used to say, Bill... Don't listen to the clock. We had this clock, tick, 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 tick. Oh, just to drive me nuts. But you know, the only way you can not think about something is to think about something else. And there's going to be things coming to your mind. Listen, my mind's no different than yours. And there's going to be things come to our mind. And we could spend time imagining them, or we can think about something else, something that's true, something that's honest, something that's just. The guard at the gate of our mind. God has given us the truth. Let me give you three things that I'd encourage you to do this morning. Number one, surrender your imagination to Christ. 
And he talks about that, that battle there in, in 2 Corinthians 10. And uh, we need to be on his side, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Allow the Holy Spirit to guard your soul. If you're saved, you have God's Holy Spirit. He says He'll help you. Uh, stop living in a, in a fantasy of worry or pornography or unreality or whatever it is. Trust the Lord. Believe. Secondly, search out the truth. You know, if you're having trouble with your imagination, find out the truth. We, we were talking this morning in our Sunday school class about some of the names of God. That's a good place to start. Just find out about God. That'll help you. Now, is it true? How do I know? Well, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. You can look at what are the res results going to be of this. Uh, what is God doing with this? Search out the truth. And then thirdly, submit to authority. And that main authority is God and God's Word. You know, we, we need to not just read and, and speak God's Word. We need to believe it. We need to believe it. You, you may not understand it all, but you need to believe it. Uh, God's authority and the, the authorities that God puts over us. And that will free you to use your imagination as God intends. It'll help you to solve problems. It'll help you to be creative. Uh, a good example of that in the Bible, you can read this on your own later, is Daniel. Daniel was very creative. Man, he had a tough situation, but he didn't waste his time worrying about things that he couldn't do anything about. He just trusted the Lord. You know, if you get nothing out of a message, it may be because you're living in a fantasy world. Listen, don't, blame, don't always blame the preacher if you don't get anything out of the preaching. Uh, your mind needs to be based in the truth. Maybe you get nothing out of God's Word because you're not saved. It's a fantasy to think that God is not real. It's a fantasy to think that you can get to heaven by good, good works. I often ask people if they think they're going to heaven, oh yeah, they've been good. That's a fantasy. It's a fantasy to think you've never sinned. That's not based on the truth. The truth is that God says all have sinned. He says the wages of sin is death. That's the truth of the matter. That applies to all of us. And, and you know, if you won't believe that, you're going to have to believe a fantasy. You know, there is... I've had people say, well, if there's a God of love, he'll, he'll forgive me and take me to heaven. Well, there is a God of love. And what he did is he sent his son to die for your sins. That's the truth of the matter. And he says, if you won't believe his son, you're going to face his judgment. That's the truth of the matter. And you can live a fantasy if you want. But someday you're going to stand before God. And you're going to give an account of the truth. What have you done with my son, Jesus Christ? Now, we love John 3, 16. God so loved the world. But that chapter ends with this statement. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's the truth. If a person won't trust Christ, they're just waiting for God's wrath. Don't live in a fantasy world. Get the truth. Let it set you free. If you're a Christian this morning, uh, submit to God's truth. Submit to God's Word in your daily life and how you live and what you do in your home and your work and as you drive your car and all of these things. Submit, uh, like he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Spiritually, we need to be tuned into the truth of God's Word. Uh, we need to let Him help us apply it with imagination in our life. God can use our minds. What's the verse in? God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. God wants us to use our mind, but not, not for untruth, not for fantasy. He wants us to use it for truth. Now, we're going to go to the Lord in, in prayer this morning. Now, the more I thought about this topic this week, I thought the more I realize that it just applies to every one of us. Uh, we need to be people of faith. We need to be people who live by the truth. Uh, maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart this morning. Uh, maybe you need to be saved. 
Maybe you've never really had a time when you've trusted Christ as your Savior. Maybe you're a Christian, but you're, you're not really living by faith. You're not applying God's Word to what, what you're doing with your life. Listen, whatever your case is, God has a solution. Let's go to Him in prayer. Father, thank You so much for Your Word. Lord, help us to understand. Help us not to live with the corruption in our thinking that we're faced with in this world. Lord, help us to come to You for the truth. You said that You are the way, the truth, and the life. Father, help us to uh, trust You. I pray, Father, if there's any this morning that are not saved, that Your Holy Spirit would convict them of sin and draw them to You. Help us as Christians, Lord, to put away these uh, imaginations that raise up against You. Help us to believe. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>